Well, Jacqueline, thank you so much for making the time to see me. This is the second time we've met in Amsterdam. I had the most lovely time with you and your husband when you very graciously welcomed us, uh, both me and my wife Debbie, to your home with your husband, who's also here. And uh, I was so intrigued, fascinated by your story with Anne Frank that I wanted to sit down and bring it to a much wider audience, and I'm, I'm grateful for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So let's begin with you. You live in Amsterdam. Uh, you, you know, they say you are never allowed to say a woman's age, <laughs> but... Well, uh, I, I never can. Uh, everybody knows my age. Yes, your age is? The same age as Anne would have had. Right, which is? Uh, 86. Right, so you're 86, and Anne would have been 86. So it's 70 years since uh, her murder, which was in March of 1945. We don't know the exact date, is that correct? Well, it is not known which age. It, it was in uh, March. In March, 1945. So this March she would have been 86, and uh, this is the set upcoming 70th anniversary of her murder, in, uh, where she died in Bergen-Belsen. So let's begin with your story. You live in Amsterdam. You were born in Amsterdam? I was born in Amsterdam. I didn't know the word anti-Semitism. At a certain moment, uh, German children came into our class. It was in the 30s. And then I didn't know why these German kin children came. I, I didn't know they were Jewish. At a certain, and the, uh, when I knew they were Jewish, I didn't understand why they came. I thought, would their father have done something bad? Or, and by and by, the war came, and I understood. So you were in a, a regular state school, like a public school, for Jewish and non-Jewish children? Yes, it was a public school. And tell us about your family. Your mother became Jewish, is that correct? My mother became Jewish. So how, how was she raised? Uh, she was uh, Catholic. Raised Catholic. France. She came from France, okay. married my father in uh, Paris. When she came to Holland, the Dutch uh, Jewish congregation didn't at, at, uh, immediately accept her. It was 1928, I think. And in 38, at last, she was accepted by the Jewish okay. congregation. So they got married Which, in France, they came here. What, she was Catholic? She was Catholic, but she, but she became Jewish she converted. by marrying my father. Okay. Yes. And the Jewish community didn't immediately embrace her? No. But by 1938 they did? But that was too late, of course. But what changed? Why, why, why did they embrace her in 1938? I don't know. I was okay. just a little child. I, I don't know and you were why. born in what year? I think that uh, it was not, she was too liberally, liberal. Oh, okay. It was more of a liberal conversion. Yes. Now what year were you born? Uh, in 20, 1929. 29. And were you raised Jewish? Not really, but I had my Jewish family, so we did uh, Pesach, uh, Seder, and that kind of thing. And when there were, was a marriage, or uh, then we, we went there, but we didn't uh, much know about it. Okay. My mother wanted my, my father, my father wanted my mother to be Jewish, but he was not really very much. Uh, involved as a Jewish right. religion. So your father wanted your mother and the family to be more Jewish, but he wasn't very practicing himself. He wasn't practicing. Okay. practicing. But you had exposure to your Jewish family, so you knew some of the Jewish holidays, but you were in a regular state school with Jewish and non-Jewish yes. children. And we didn't know who was Jewish or not Jewish. Oh, no one knew. It wasn't... We were all Dutch children. Right. No one talked about who was Jewish and who wasn't Jewish? No, and no because the Jewish children who were really uh, raised Jewish and uh, they were on separate schools, on, uh, on uh, Jewish schools that were also in Amsterdam. Okay, so there were Jewish day schools and the more committed Jewish children went to those schools, but there were also Jewish children in your state school? Yes. And there was no anti-Semitism? None? I never, I never experienced anti-Semitism at that time. Okay. But there was anti-Semitism, I, I suppose. I think my husband had some problems. Okay, and we'll talk about your husband and your family. But suddenly there's an influx of German Jewish children to your state school, and you're wondering why are they here? 
So you thought maybe their parents were criminals or something, that they had to flee from Germany? Yes. You didn't understand the rise of Hitler, you were too young. I, no, I, I was too, too young. And I asked and, uh, one of the girls who became friends with me, uh, why did you come here? And she said, there's anti-Semitism in D Germany. But I didn't know the world and, and I didn't ask anymore. So, she, so one of the German Jewish girls explained to you that there's a lot of Jew hatred that's no, swelling she did, up. She just mentioned the word. Uh -huh. And I didn't understand what she meant. Really? So you were that sealed off from anti-Semitism that even when she talked about how it was growing in Germany, it was a foreign concept to you. Yes. Very foreign. Okay. With these children who started arriving into your school because of the rise of uh, Hitler, anti-Semitism, one of those girls was a young girl named Anne Frank. No, not yet. Okay. But Anne Frank I met afterwards, during the war, because the Germans... The Nazis didn't want to, the, they wanted to separate the Jewish children from non-Jewish children. So they made these new Jewish schools where all the children from Amsterdam had to go, all the Jewish children had to go. Okay, so that's when you meet her. So Jacqueline, so you're in a state school, your mother was embraced by the Jewish community in 1938, and then suddenly, in 1940, the Germans launch an invasion of Holland. They capture the country in just five days. Did you see the German soldiers coming into Amsterdam? I saw the Germans coming over the bridge, and uh, quite a lot of people were looking. The Dutch were looking at this. They were observing the, the Germans coming into over the bridge, and were very silent. But there were a few amongst them who was who were. Uh, giving the Nazi salute. Yes. So there were Dutch collaborators who welcomed the German army and who did Heil Hitler. And you remember that? That's what I remember. And you were a girl of how old by now? I was 11 years old. 11, okay. So how quickly did things change in Amsterdam under the German occupation? Uh, at the, in the beginning, it, there was nothing that changed. We thought, I thought, well, maybe bombs were falling over our heads and we have no, no food anymore. That was the only thing I was thinking. I was only 11 years old and I didn't know anything else. But in 1948, uh, 41, it all started. The German oppression started. We then, uh, by that time, I knew what anti-Semitism was, first of all. But uh, then several uh, things that were not so nice happened to, to the Jewish children. And because uh, my mother had converted to the Jewish uh, religion, my sister and me, we were also Jewish. That's what my father wanted, of course, but at that moment, it was the wrong moment. So we had to uh, register as Jewish. And uh, my mother was not considered Jewish by the Nazis because it was only the blood that counted. And so she had no Jewish blood at all, so she wasn't considered she Jewish. Wasn't considered. But you had half Jewish blood, so you were considered Jewish with your sister. Because we were registered, there were also children who were not registered, in the, who had a Jewish mother or father, who were not registered as Jewish, so they didn't have to wear the star. Okay, so you started wearing the star? I, but that was a few years. A few 1941. Later. I think it was in 1942 or the end of 1941. At the end of 1941. The end of 1941, you had to start wearing a star. Yeah. And is that when they moved you out of the state school? No, we were already uh, out of the state school and uh, we were already separated from the non Jewish children. Okay. And. Uh, so the Nazis took the Jewish children out of the state schools, the public schools, and they put them all together. They put us all together, and the teachers were also taken from the uh, state schools. Okay. And we had a very nice time together <laughs> at that moment. So Jewish teachers, Jewish think, children. Yes. And everyone wearing... It was very, uh, the atmosphere was all right. It was very nice. And I met Anne uh, immediately, so 
And we had a very nice time about it for that school that year. So you meet Anne Frank in 1941 when all the Jewish children are forcibly put together by the occupying Nazi authorities. And you meet her where? In, in, in class one day? Anne and I were in the same class. I didn't immediately see her. I think she sat behind me. But when I went home on my bicycle, she came behind me and said, are you in my class? And she talked to me and took me home with her immediately. And that's how we met. So you were going home on your bicycle and she was also on a bicycle? And was also on a bicycle okay. and came behind me, called my name. And uh, I had to ask, what's your name? Because I, I did, hadn't remarked her uh, in the class. And, uh, and what did she say? What was her answer? She, she said, I, my name is Anne. Annalise is German. She didn't go by that. She went by Anna? Um, Annalise was not at that, was at that moment not present. She was not yet in our class, I think. Okay. Maybe she was later. I don't know, I don't remember exactly when I met her. She okay. was in the class also. Okay, so she comes behind you on the bicycle and she says, my, Hi, my name is Anne Frank. What? Do you want to go play? Do you want to... Uh, well, she told me a lot of story about her stories, about herself, about her friends, about about Hada, about, I don't know, the little girl. Because these German, uh, the Germans came all to live in, in the same neighborhood. The refugees from, uh, from Germany. Right, and she so had come from knew, Frankfurt. They knew each other, each other, and she had a few friends in that. Uh, and she had friends from the German Jewish community who had moved to Amsterdam. Because the parents were friends, uh -huh. and they, they came in the same neighborhood. And um, but then, well, she came behind me, and we. She took the. the she took the. She, she, she started, she initiated, she initiated. She initiated. She initiated. So and she initiated our friendship and uh -huh. I liked that very much because she was just opposite. She had quite another character than I had. I would never have come behind her and said I am, uh, but she came behind me and she took me home with her and she said to her mother, this is Jacqueline, my, my, uh, my, friend, my school, new school friend, she said. And, uh, so she, she took you straight to her home, where you met her mother? I met her mother. Later on I met her sister, who also, Margot, who also had to go to uh, the to Jewish the school. Same school. And, uh, so this is the first day you met. She comes, introduces herself, yes. come to my house. Yes, and uh, Anne was, that was the kind of girl she was. Friendly? And she was very friendly to me. She could be very no awful to others. Mm -hmm. I found out later on, but... Uh, if she didn't like somebody, she immediately taught. And so and I would never have done so, but Anne was quite opposite as the character. She w expressed her feelings she always. She expressed as immediately her feelings, and that I liked that very much, although I wasn't like that myself. Were you a more shy person than, than Anne Frank? You yes. were shyer? She was not shy. She was not shy? <laughs> no, no. So was she a happy girl? She was a happy girl, very busy. Together we were very busy with all lots of things. That's what I think that kept us together all the time. We were always doing things, reading books, uh, doing, uh, played Monopoly, for instance. And uh, like like Monopoly, Monopoly, the way we have it today, same game. Same game because it was very new at the time. And you would and play we where? At your house, her house, where? Most, we were mostly at Anne's house because I didn't, uh, my parents were at that time, mm, how do I say that? The atmosphere at our home was not as, as good as it was. Uh -huh. Were your parents not getting along? At that moment, my parents, my mother was angry especially after the moment she heard that we had to wear the star and she knew what was coming. And my father stayed optimistic and he said, we must do everything that must be done and um, then nothing will happen. That's fascinating. So your mother foreshadowed how bad it would get. Your father said, no, it's going to be okay. Well, that was the character of my mother and my <coughs> father. He was an optimist. He was an optimist. And she was more of a pessimist. Yes. 
and unfortunately she got it right. Unfortunately, he found out later on his whole family, his sisters, his brothers, my niece, my cousins, they were all uh, taken by the Germans, never came back. They were all the taken to, to Auschwitz? They were to Sobibor. To Sobibor. And I, later on I could, uh, I uh, found out that they were all gassed because it was all the same day their death. Wow. Probably the moment they came into Sobibor. Your aunts, your uncles, your cousins. They were all gone. But at that moment, first of all, we children, we didn't know very much of, of, uh, about what happened. And people, did, the parents didn't tell their children as much as today. So there was tension in your home between your parents over this fundamental issue yes. of your mother being angry that, like, why didn't you listen to me? Now we're in big trouble. Had you listened to me, then I the children would not I, be I registered as Jewish. I don't remember because I went out of the room as soon as they were they would, started be, quarreling. Okay. Yes, they would argue. So Anne Frank's home became an escape for you to get away from your parents quarreling. Mm. I don't know. I didn't want her to come to my house too much because I didn't want her to hear this. Mm -hmm. Because my mother was French and she immediately said what she wanted to say. So you would go to Anne Frank's house? Yes. But she came to me also mm -hmm. because that was Anne. I could have said, no, today we go to your house. If she wanted to come to my house, she came. <laughs> now, since you and Anne Frank had very different characters, what was the nature of your friendship? She was an uh, extrovert and loud, I guess, and you said not at all shy. She would tell you if she liked you a lot, and she would attach herself to you. She would tell you if you, she didn't like you. You were quieter and a little bit more shy, so how did I you... I didn't understand what, what do you see in me, because she talked and talked, and I never said anything. And she wanted to know everything from me, and I was not the kind of girl to tell her everything. I didn't want to tell her about my parents and all these things. But she told me everything. She was all the time talking all the time. So you were more private? Yes. You didn't want her to know your parents were fighting? No, I didn't want her to know. I don't know if she even knew, mm. so I don't know. Okay. But she wasn't a private person. She would just share everything. Like in her diary, she would just say everything. Yes, if you read in Anne's diary, you know exactly her, her character. And she was just like that? Did you enjoy being at her home? Was it a nice atmosphere? I was, yes, it was a very nice atmosphere at Anne's home. And I liked her mother very much. She was all, all the time busy and very friendly. Only I felt that she was a bit sad. And afterwards I thought, well, it must have been so difficult for her because Otto, her father, had his business and he met people. And she was all the time at home, and she didn't speak Dutch very well. And she had left all her family, her friends in Germany, hmm. and a big house in Frankfurt, and they had just a nice apartment, but not, nothing compared to where they lived in Frankfurt. So in Frankfurt, they were wealthier. They had a larger home. I'm sure they were. And here they had a, a smaller apartment. I've never been in the apartment. I saw it from the outside. So that's where you would play in that apartment, right by the right by the park. But, but uh, yes, it's not really a park. But yeah, the little oval. The green. Uh, yeah. yeah. So she seemed sad to you, Edith Frank. Yes, she, she was so silent. And afterwards, at that moment, I didn't know, of course. But afterwards, I thought she must have felt very, very sad to be there in mm -hmm. this, this apartment. Was well, she? A, a protective mother? Did she yes. like ask? She F was very protective. Very protective. Always busy in the family, in the house. Mm -hmm. and, uh, did she, did, Anne seems to have been a very spirited girl, like, like you're describing, very opinionated, very headstrong. Did she clash with her mother? That's what, at that moment, no. But she was sometimes jealous when her mother went too much with her sister. Hmm. That's the only thing I once uh, experienced when they went went to the to the dentist and her mother wanted to, to go shopping. That's what she told me afterwards because she was very angry. Her mother um, said, "You go home and I go shopping with Marco." And she came home to me and she was very angry. That's the only time I experienced this. 
It sounds like Margot was more like her mother. Both of them a little bit quieter. I think so too. And uh, Anne was very much like her father because after the war, I got to know Otto Frank much better until his death. We were big friends. And then I recognized Anne in his character. Mm -hmm. So and she was more like her father. That she, that she was very much like her father. But she got along with her mother. And there was a nice, pleasant atmosphere in the home. And you had the uh, dinner with them many times? Um, yes, when and got the idea that I, I should stay for dinner. On the first day you met her? Already the first day I met her, yes. And, uh, and they had regular family dinners as, as a family? That I do. What, uh, Did they have regular family dinners? They ate together they almost ate every together. night? or? They had dinner at 6 o'clock. Okay. Um, that green area, you said it's not a park, but that oval area, is, did you and Anne play there? Uh, when I met Anne, we were 12 years old, and we didn't play in the street anymore. We just were in the house, and we did a lot of things together in the house. We had the same books, and... Uh, and was always did her homework very all the time. When we came home, she did her homework, and I did, I never did my homework. <laughs> we were very very okay. different. Okay. So at that moment, you and I, I you and I are more like each other. <laughs> do my homework either. So you never did your homework, but she had to do not her homework. Not much. I, I okay. just read a little in the books, and then it okay. was okay. And so she was a good student. She focused. Well, she was very bad at mathematics, which I could. I was not bad at mathematics, so I helped her, but uh, she wasn't better. I helped her, but it didn't help. Anything. Okay. So you helped her with math, but she still did yes. badly. And she said, I shall help you with German, but uh, that wasn't necessary. She was fluent in German? She never spoke German. She was fluent in Dutch. Okay. Because she was in Holland at as a little twelve, girl. As a little girl, and I met her when she was 12. Right. She spoke without an accent. She spoke Dutch without an accent. As far as I know, she spoke, as I remember, yeah. she spoke without an accent, yes. Okay. But her mother spoke with an accent. Her mother spoke very bad. Her, her bad Dutch, Dutch. was very bad. And, her, and Margot? Margot was also, spoke very well Dutch also. And Otto? Um, he had an accent, but he spoke very well Dutch. Okay. What did, what, so describe like a day. You would go to school, Anne would be in your class, you'd come home. What would the two of you do? Um, we were, were bu busy immediately with lots of things. And uh, we invented, uh, for instance, Anne had invented to do, uh, f she asked her father to do uh, a film in the house for we. We were not permitted to go to the cinema anymore. Jews weren't permitted. The Jewish were not permitted to go to the cinema. But we were, of, of course, only 12. We didn't go so much to, to the cinema. But at that moment, it was forbidden for Jewish people. So she made the films at, at home. And she, her father had a, a camera and she, at his office, and he brought the camera. and. Of films, and she invited the class, the children from the class. Wow. So the Jews were not allowed to go to the cinema anymore. So Otto Frank had a projector, and he would bring it home, and Anne would invite the class, her classmates, to watch films. Where, where did they get the films from? I think they could hire, is that the right word? Yeah. I they could rent they them. Could, yeah, they could rent them. Yes. And how often did you do that? Well, I only remember one day. In March because I still kept little invitations because we made the invitations. That kind of thing we did as if it were a real cinema. And I still kept this little piece of paper. Which really? Says, yes, I still have it. We're still there says uh, you and with the name. Well, my name is on that piece I kept. Jacqueline Formas is invited to come to uh, marry the plane and. Uh, Without this card, no entrance. <laughs> really, Anne wrote yeah. that out. But I wrote, I wrote it out myself. 
people oh. think that Anne wrote it, but that's not true. I, I wrote it, and I, I made the cards with Rudy. That's the kind of thing I did. We invented it together, but I read it on Otto Frank's uh, typewriter. And this, I know that I wrote Jacqueline for Marcia myself. <laughs> and you still have that? I still have that. When, when people go to the Anne Frank house, they see some of the Hollywood film stars on the walls that Anne put up to make her life there easier. She liked movies? She liked movie stars? She likes it. She likes these pictures. And she she's collected them. Ameri I, I American film her. stars? Um, Jenna Durbin. And, um, but mostly German because really? there were little, yes, because at that time there were no American films anymore in, in Holland. They stopped all the American yes, films? Yes, it was forbidden. So at that moment there were all these German film stars and uh, I liked their looks and she cut them out and kept them in a box. And I cut, uh, I know I helped her to cut them out. That's the kind of, uh, I helped her to cut them out. That kind of thing I like to do. Were you also interested in films and movie stars? I was not so interested in as I know. So she was more into the glamour was, of Hollywood yes, that's and what movies. She liked. Uh -huh. So you would help her because that's that was her hobby. It was her hobby, and I liked to help her with it. And we both had a hobby to collect uh, postcards, and that's what we also did. Do you have any of those postcards still? I have a few postcards from Anne. I have one postcard I kept from uh, Shirley Temple because she liked, she knew that I liked Shirley Temple, so she must have given this card to me. I don't remember the moment that she gave it, but I have the card in my collection because I still collect uh, postcards. And um, she, we sent each other a postcard when it was 1942, 1941, 1942, and I still. Yep, for, new, for New Year's? For New Year's. For New Year's. So Anne, Anne would send you a New Year's card and you would send and her. Sent, and I knew because she wrote in her diary, she wrote everything down. Uh, I, from Jacqueline, I have just this little silly card without a photo. And I asked her so many times to give me a photo and I never did. And I felt very guilty when I read this in the diary afterwards, after the war, of course, when I knew she was dead. But. Um, I didn't have, and had many photos because Otto made a lot of photos. So I have still have my, her photo. And um, so I once asked in, at the Anne Frank house, uh, and she, kind of, she, she also wrote that she put this card in her diary. So I once asked uh, after the war, many years later, can I see into the diary about my card? I wanted to see my card stuck in, in the diary. And it was a very silly card. She was a, it was just Jacqueline. I stood, nothing else. Just Jacqueline? Just Jacqueline. It was a New Year's card and I put Jacqueline. And she, uh, she put on her card, wishes you in. So I can understand that she was disappointed. Because so you had just written Jacqueline, you had, hadn't written a message. There was no message. There was no message at all. Well, she didn't. She, and she said, and wishes you. And she wrote in her diary later that she was disappointed. She was disappointed and that I didn't give her a photo of myself. But now, now it's too late and I have no photo. So I, f I feel very bad. I felt very bad about it when I read this in the diary. So what was it like being two Jewish girls in Amsterdam at that time? You would play, on the one hand, things seemed normal. You couldn't go to films, but you could watch them at home. You could go outdoors. You had to wear a yellow star? We had to, yes, at a certain moment we had to wear a yellow star. So what was it like being two Jewish girls? Did you know that you were hated? Did you know your lives were in danger? Or did uh, you think it was we, just passing? We knew we were in, uh, in the streets. We made sure that we were not doing things that were not permitted. We couldn't go in the park, we couldn't go... Jews weren't allowed in the park? Well, Jews were not allowed in the park. Now, while this is happening, your mother was trying to get your name off the Jewish register? Um, that's, I, I didn't um, know about it, but at a certain moment, at that moment, 
my mother started to get our names uh, and removed. Removed. Get your names removed from. My uh, mother did her best to uh, get our names removed from the uh, list of deportation. The deportation was that saying moment. that you weren't Jewish. Uh, saying that she was not Jewish. Okay. But your father was Jewish, so how could that help? I mean, you were definitely half Jewish. We were Jewish because we were uh, in yeah. a Jewish re uh, registered in a Jewish congregation. So we were Jewish. So she was getting your names off of the registers. My mother did her best to get our names off. But first of all, first I didn't know anything about it. And at the moment I found out, my mother said, don't say anything to your father because he didn't yet know exactly what was going to happen. And she was afraid he would be very angry. Um, well, there is a little story which I just a few months ago, this is not my, I just tell you this because it's too complicated. I know that we were on a list called the Kalmeyer list. And I knew about this Kalmeyer list. It was a German a Nazi living in, was in Amsterdam in the, in the SDA. And he um, did his best to get as many uh, Jews or people who had just one Jewish uh, um, grandfather or grandmother who were considered Jewish for the, by the Nazis. He made another, um, he, he, he uh, yeah, that's too good, <laughs> ingewikkeld. There was, there was a Goldmeyer list. Goldmeyer. Gold, yeah, okay. And, and this, this was a Nazi officer. Okay. Who was working in the SD. Officer. Okay. And he uh, uh, helps to convince his superiors mm -hmm. that uh, people who do not have four Jewish grandparents are not to be considered Jewish. And he put, I think, about 3,000 Jewish people into freedom by creating wow. this list. Yes. And your wife's, and she was on the list. We, we very recently uh, discovered uh -huh. that uh, they, her mother has, uh, put, has been uh, helped to get their name on the Kalmaya list. Why did this Nazi officer do this? Why did he do that? I don't know. Okay. That's what is Sounds like a Jewish name. <laughs> yeah, no, he was not Jewish at all. And sometimes they think that maybe he did it to save his own life. Yeah, he, he may have had... Uh, he okay. knew that the, uh -huh. the war would be lost by the Germans. Oh, got it, okay. So, and I knew about his list at, when, at the certain moment. There was is a German uh, man who uh, wrote a book about it. And I got acquainted to him and he said, you are on that list. And I said, no, you, uh, you were saved by Karl Bayer. So and that's I what said, saved you, being after, on that list? <coughs> But I said to him, I was very angry. I said, no, my mother did this. I have nothing to do with this list. And then he showed me a piece of paper on which my mother's signature and even my father's signature were on. So that's what I didn't know during the war. So that's what ended up saving you, and you didn't know that until recently. I, yeah, recently, very recently. Wow, that's incredible. It's it's incredible. So you thought your mother had gotten you off the Jewish registry when in truth you were put on this Kohlmeyer list because you only had, well, you had two Jewish grandparents. Yes. But he still got you on this list. I had to go on this And your list. mother and your father signed it. So, you're, so I guess in the end, your mother prevailed. She won out in this argument with your father. She won out. Yes. And she saved your life. She saved our lives. And, and my but he couldn't. And my father's how did she? How did she get him on the list? He was 100% Jewish. Well, the Jews who had... Uh, children who were, were not on that list. Jews who had yeah. non-Jewish children were not right. on that list. Who had they could get on the yes. Kohlmeyer list as well. So that saved him too. Well, I don't think he could go on this. Well, I just tell this in between. I, I don't think he had to go on this Kohlmeyer list, but because he had two non-Jewish children at that moment, and he had to be sterilized, which was not, yes, that's what they did. And there was, was a doctor 
who uh, signed the paper as if this was happened for many people. And uh, so he could get, get in 1943, there were no Jews in the town anymore, in Amsterdam. And the Jews who were there, they could take the uh, star. Gosh. So that's amazing. So being on this list meant it's, you didn't go to any special place. It just means that you were never deported. They never came and deported you. Is that correct? Yes. You just continued to live with a yellow star or, or the yellow star was gone by now? The, the yellow star could be taken off. I went to the school where I should have gone. Oh, you went back to the original school I went back to the once school. you got on this list. I and got there it. was an awful time because people didn't talk about Jews anymore. Uh -huh. They just pretended. The separation was very well done by the Germans and they didn't talk about it and I thought that they were very uh, indifferent about what happened to the Nobody Jews. asked, where did, you, where did the Jews go? No one asked. No one asked and no one Everyone said. just pretended. In my, in my, in my uh, opinion they were not really interested and I felt that anti-Semitism had grown. At that during the war with all this uh, propaganda. And that was a very bad time also. And after the war it was the same. Well, Holland lost the second highest percentage of Jews of any European country. The highest was Poland. 90% were murdered. And Holland was at least 80%. Some people say even 90%. And a lot of people say that the Dutch didn't do enough to help save Jews. Like in like in the Danes saved 99.9% .9 of their Jews. This is remarkable because they hid them, they ferried them across to Sweden. But in Holland, at least 80% died. So you're saying people were indifferent to the plight of the Jews? They didn't really care? Well, you must, of course, take into consideration that it was dangerous to help the Jews. My husband has lived because he was saved by... He was hid. He, he, was, he was hid. Hidden. And taken by a very... So there were non-Jewish people, obviously, who, yes. who your husband was but saved. But do you think enough was done? Um, of course not. It was not enough. But I always think would ha I have say, uh, done the same. Because it was very dangerous. You had to be uh, very brave to, to help. Okay, so let's go back to 19... So you meet Anne Frank in 1941, and you would know her for about a year, through 1942, until she went until into hiding. Until she went to Okay. And things are getting worse now? It got worse and worse. She was one of the first who went into hiding in our class. What started to get worse? Like, it, it sounds like Anna was very uh, upbeat, optimistic, vivacious full of life. Yes, we thought it, it would stay like this. We had a bad time, the war would be over in a few. There'd be some persecution of Jews, like you can't do this and can't do that, but that would be it. Yes. So you uh, thought that would be, it wouldn't get worse. Something happened in my family. Um, there was a razzia and uh, hold up. And um, a boy, Young young man from my family. He uh, was not not a cousin, but bit from my father. He uh, was taken away at the Razia because there was a, a Nazi Dutch Nazi man was shot. So they took a lot of young men to Mauthausen, and that I remember. That was the first thing I remember in 1941, the beginning of 1941. And a few months later, his mother got uh, a letter that he was dead. Really? So a it was a very bad thing. That was the first thing I really... The first really bad thing that when really you knew... The really bad thing that I experienced. Be the other things were not... That, broke. Was your, that was your cousin? It was not the cousin of my cousin. Okay. And so uh, a, a Dutch Nazi was assassinated, and in retaliation, they took a group of young Jews and they deported them to Mauthausen. To Mauthausen. And then they got a letter, he's dead. Yes. So they knew he had been murdered. A few months later, he already was dead. And that's the first thing I, I experienced, because until that time, and in the beginning, we just couldn't go in the park, we couldn't go to the swimming pool, that kind of thing. But we, we didn't really miss it. We had a very nice friendship 
and it wind schools very nice. Um, and we had a lot of fun at the school. And this was the first thing with this boy. He was 18, I think, and I liked him quite a lot. Who uh, that this happened? But we said we thought it was just. I thought it was just once. It was something that happened at that moment, and uh, I didn't think this is the beginning. But my mother knew, and she said to my father, "It is the beginning." And she she understood this. Did you and Anna talk about this? That I. I think I told her. I must have told her. And she was still always. But that was before I, I knew Anne. Okay. As things got worse, did she become more depressed, or was she just no, as? No, and and got not, not depressed at all. Until the last moment I saw her, we just thought, well, we can't go in, in the park and. We can't go and do this and that because her parents didn't tell her. She didn't know until the last moment that they would go hiding. And I had a uh, conversation at telephone, which I didn't remember, but I read in her diary because she wrote two letters to me, which she entered in her diary afterwards. It was a farewell letter, and I know that we. She writes, "This is the farewell letter," and. That's because we said, maybe one of us must leave. I don't know how we did know this, but then we, we write each other a letter. And I couldn't find that letter at all. And uh, after the war, Otto gave me a copy of the letters because she copied the letters to me in her diary. She was not permitted to send them to, to send this letter. To after me. she went into hiding. And those letters and were incorporated that, into the into the diary. But Otto gave you the actual letters. He didn't know the actu actual letters were lost, but I'm very happy that she put them in the diary. In September, she wrote the letters in June when she went into hiding or July, and she copied in September the letters. And in these letters, she wrote, uh, "When you called me on Sunday afternoon, the house was upside down." And um, my mother said, don't tell Jackie that we uh, are going into hiding. So that's why I know that that was the last time I talked to her. So she shared every secret with you, but not this one? She, I think she would have liked to, say, say, to tell me. She told but you everything. But her mother said, don't, uh, of course. Did her mother, te her mother, did her mother tell her how she, serious this was, that this is course, life and death? Yes. That's why she didn't want she so her mother would have told her that because her mother knew that she told you everything. She told you every yes, secret. We were on the phone and her mother heard that we were on the phone and the house was upside down. That's what she wrote to me. So, um, so she her mother said, don't talk to tell her. So she and apologized. So I didn't know. Just before we get to that, just before we go into hand going into hiding, did you and I ever talk about God? Like why would God allow this? Did God no, come not up? At all. I know that her, her sister and her mother went to synagogue, but maybe Anne went there too. I never, I never knew. Did we you ever talk, ab talk about God? No, not at all. Never asked, like, why does God allow these bad things to happen? Not at all. Never asked, like, sure. where is God as Hitler takes over Europe? No, I'm, and Anne was not that kind of girl. Maybe she, afterwards, because then she was called up very quickly growing up in, in hiding. And Judaism, did Judaism come up at all? Like, No, it was not our subject. Did, fa did, she, did her family have like Friday night Shabbat dinners or? Um, I think, I don't remember. She never invited you to but a Friday what, night no. Shabbat dinner? Lighting the candles, anything like that? No, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't know if they did light the candles. I know that Otto was also very, uh, Otto and Anne were very much the same, I think. Her mother was religious and uh -huh. Margot was religious. That's what I afterwards found out. But Anne and me, we had all, only very realistic uh, thoughts. Like even like a big day, like Yom Kippur, like a very big Jewish day, did that ever come up? Did she fast? No, that's, I do not remember. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe she did think, didn't think I was Jewish enough to talk about these things. That's possible, uh -huh. but I don't think so. Did, you, she, did she ever talk about Israel? Because Margot was a Zionist, a bit of a Zionist, right? She was involved in a Zionist That's youth group. That's what I read in the diary. Okay. But that I, didn't come up with Anne? About Israel, I know from the diary. From the diary, but from not diary, from conversations with we, Anne. We didn't talk about it. Okay. So you were both very Dutch. And Anne had become very Dutch. Yeah. Yes. But the fact that you now had to wear a Jewish star, the fact that now you had to be reminded you were Jewish in the worst way through anti-Semitism, that never was discussed, what it means to be Jewish? Not with us, but we were only 12 years old. Uh -huh. So her mother and Margot were more religious than Otto and Frank yes. and, and Anne. I know that at that moment, Jewishness was a burden. It was a burden. So better not to discuss it. I don't know if we didn't discuss yeah. it that way, but at that moment, for me, it, especially afterwards, it was a burden. At the beginning, I didn't. I, I just accepted it, and Anne accepted it. We all accepted it. That there was nothing you could do about it? That ju being Jewish is a burden, and you can't change it? At that moment, yes. So things get worse, and then you had no idea that the family was going to go into hiding, did you? I had no idea, although one day I found out that they had other chairs in the room, and I asked, hey, your chairs have changed. And then they was said to me, I don't know who said this, and maybe Otto, um, the chairs are being re- uh, Upholstered? Upholstered or? again. And I thought I was funny, would have they no other uh, problems mm. and his chairs. And very much later, after the war, I thought I, I nearly had understood why these chairs were gone because they went to the back. To they the went to the annex. So you, okay, so you had some questions but no real knowledge that they were going to no, disappear. I just did it seem like Anne knew or did it seem like she didn't know? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. I d maybe Anne told me about this whole thing. Because she didn't know. I'm, I'm sure she didn't know anything about it. And then one day she just disappeared? Then uh, Hannah, uh, we called her Lise at that moment, came to me and she said, Anne is gone and we went to the house and we tried. Just like that, disappeared, the family disappeared? The dis family disappeared. She stopped because, coming into because school? Because her parents were, of course, friendly to her parents. And uh, now she came to my house because we were friends all together. And um, she came to my house and she said, Anne is gone. And uh, she, the man who lived there said he, she, they went to Switzerland. And we thought, yes, okay, they have their family in, in Basel. So we thought they went there. But wouldn't you have said to yourself, gosh, this is my best friend. If she went to Switzerland, she would have told me. I mean, what's the big deal about going to but Switzerland? I would have been angry with her that she hasn't so not at all. No. Did you believe she went I to Switzerland? I was a bit disappointed because I couldn't find the, da the farewell letter she had promised to send me. But if she had gone to Switzerland, she would have given you a forwarding address. She would have told you how to stay in touch. She wouldn't have just disappeared. Even if they had gone to Switzerland, I would, her parents would not have uh, would have forbidden to, to tell me. That, that was dangerous also. So you knew that wherever they had gone, it was somewhere dangerous, so she couldn't tell you, so you... Well, I didn't know about this. I was only 12, but I think my father told me, because I, yes. how, how is it possible that they go to, because the, the borders were closed. So your father said it's impossible. No, I said, is it dangerous? And he said, well, people must have helped them, the families. Oh, there. so your father thought they went to Switzerland, but okay. Well, we all, all thought, all right. people around the families thought so. Okay. But after the war, I discovered that it was not true, of course. Did you miss her? I missed her, yes. I know that the moment uh, I went to, to the other school, the, the day that she had gone, I remember the year after, now Anne is gone for one, wow. one year. And then the next time, next year I thought so too. And then 
after that it was over, because you get over things. So after two and years, you started after to... the after the war, she will come back. She'll and come we'll back. With friends again. And were there uh, were there other people disappearing too? Yes, but there were other people disappearing. Well, many were being deported to, to Auschwitz, right? A lot of families you knew were being deported. Um, let me think what is wrong. Yes, we knew that they were being deported, but we thought for work. For work, not for extermination. No, no one knew. No, we, there's such a thing that never happened before. But your mother seems to have known, because she thought. She knew, and that's another story. She knew because she had her people. She knew. Okay, she had information. She had information. So, the war ends. Do you remember when the war ended? Yes, I remember very well. Were people and very joyous? Very were they? I, I and they was were liberated. Very happy myself. In fact, that was just very short. And I thought the people would come back. Oh, you thought Anne, you thought Anne back. would come back? Did you think of Anne then I when the war ended? I thought immediately Anne will come back now, and my my family will come back. And, um, and then what happened? How did you know that nobody Anne? nobody came back. Nobody came back? Otto Frank came back. And what, wh when did you first see Otto? Um, if, I think of two months after the war, because he was ill at the moment of the... Maybe not anymore then. But he came maybe in... In the summer, I don't know exactly when, I mean, maybe a month after the war, and told me that what had happened, I was of course very surprised to see him, and without Anne. And he, he uh, didn't know at that moment that Anne, and he knew that his wife was dead in Auschwitz, but he didn't know where Anne was, or where she still was still alive. So there came, some more people came back, Jewish people, from the camps, and he asked all the time, did you see my daughters? And months, a few weeks later, he came to me and he said, Anne is dead, and Margot is dead. They were American bells, and then he told the story, because he met people who had seen them dying. How and old? he was crying all the time. It was very old. I was 16. And he was, in my opinion, an old man crying. And but I, he wanted to talk to me all the time about Anne. It was difficult for me. He wanted to talk to you because you knew her. It was. Yes. It, it, it comforted him. In my idea, yes, it, com it comforted him to talk about her. But people always forget that Margot was also his daughter, and he was sad about Margot as well. And Marco's best friend, which I knew also, uh, there he went to her too and talked about Marco, oh. of course. And this was hard on you when he talked to you about mm -hmm. Anne? Yes, yes. But my mother said, and he wanted to go out with me and not to stay at home all the time. He wanted to go to a cafe or something to talk about Anne. And I didn't like that, but my mother said, just go, because she found out. She knew, of course, that it comforted him. So I went with him, and we talked about Anne all the time. Wow. When did you first find out that Anne had written you a letter in the diary? Um, me, uh, Gies, who had saved uh, the life of these people, these eight people, um, gave him the diary uh, after, uh, he, when he knew that Anne, when she knew that Anne was dead, she gave him the diary because she kept it for Anne, and then she gave it to him, and she said, this is for you. And he, he started reading it immediately. And then he found these letters in the diary, written in the diary, and he copied them and gave them to me. Did that explain everything to you? That explained a lot, and I was very happy because she wrote, in the first letter she wrote, uh, I hope that we'll always be best friends until we meet again. So, uh, Do you still think about her? Um, all the time I think about her because people want to know about her and I tell the story of our friendship. They want to know everything about Anne, so that's for, 
at first I didn't talk about her, I thought about her, but I never talked about her. But then I started to uh, come into the open with this friendship, which I first didn't want because I wanted to be myself and I didn't want to be Anne's best friend in my life. You understand? Of course, of course I understand. So at a certain moment there was a reason that I wanted to tell about Anne and our friendship. And then I was asked about her all the time. And the more Anne became famous, the more I'm asked about her. So I think of her all the time. Is it, it must be very strange to have had a childhood friend who you remember doing all the things that little girls do together. And now she becomes this global icon, almost an image of, of uh, the most famous victim of the Holocaust, a global icon of, uh, of suffering, but also of hope. Is that strange for you, the, the myth of Anne Frank and the reality of your best friend? Yes, it, it is very strange for me that she's, suddenly everybody knows this little girl and you. And I'm sure she would have loved to be remembered by everybody because she wanted to be famous. She wanted to be that's famous. That's what I know. And, uh, she wanted to be famous as what? As an actress, as a writer, as a singer? At, at that moment, I don't think she had a set. Uh, she, she knew about being a writer because I found out that she got this idea the moment she was writing in her diary because she liked this, she liked writing. And then she thought, probably I shall be a journalist or a writer. So you think she would like the idea of her global fame? And would certainly have liked the idea, but had she known that she would have to die for it, no. I don't think so. No. She was very lively. I always tell people, and that's still, it's still the case, uh, I've never met anyone who enjoyed life as much as Anne. And I never have had, I have a, a best friend now, of course, who afterwards, it's, I'm still friends with her. She lives in Spain and we lie to each other. But it's a different friendship. I've never had a friendship like that before with, I had with Anne. Just as we, as we conclude, do you think it's important for people to to find the human Anne Frank as opposed to the myth? Do you think it's important for people to hear who she really was as opposed to this icon, this global icon? People, I know that people always want to know how, how was Anne, and I say, just read her diary, then you will know. Are you concerned about the Jews in Europe now? Um, it's, diff it's a difficult time at the moment. Like when you hear the Prime Minister of Israel say all the Jews should go to Israel, what do you, yeah. what do you think? Well, I think Israel is very important. And I liked him say so. I know that he has, he has critics because he said this. But it's, it's wonderful that people can go there and be themselves. Let me just say, I can see why Anne Frank chose you as her best friend. <laughs> you have a warm, beautiful nature. Sparkling eyes. <laughs> you're, a, you're a you're a you're a phenomenal storyteller, and no. uh, you're as honest as they come. And it's such a pleasure for me, for the second time, to get to speak to you, Jacqueline. And thank you very much for sharing your life story and story. And um, as a Jew, it's uh, wonderful for me to see that we have ambassadors like you, who can speak so beautifully about the time when European jewelry no, were happy and before this terrible, terrible unspeakable tragedy befell our people. And thank you for being part of uh, the Anne Frank story. Because, you know, beyond her just being this girl in the diary, she's, she's become a symbol of so many that were lost. One and a half million Jewish children that were and murdered. And I have so many fantasies about her. And I try to be, to say only the things I know. I don't make it more beautiful. Right. And uh, I hate that just because I know how many people want to have been friends with her. And uh, they, they just invent stories. And that's why I'm just trying to say nothing but the truth.